Hi class, this lecture here continues our study of the relationship between two variables by now talking about a really, really important concept called correlation. Now, going back, okay, we were, we were looking at this relationship between two variables, uh, so the hours of study and the exam score. And basically what we saw was it looked like there was a positive linear relationship, okay? And notice, notice that it's not a like perfect, perfect straight line. Okay, like it deviates just a little. Okay, so what we want to do with correlation, or the whole the whole idea of correlation, is we want to measure the strength of the relationship. Okay, so how strong is that linear relationship? Okay. So basically what we want to do to answer this question is we want to compute a number and then we want to look at the value of that number and the value of that number is going to determine or tell us how strong that linear relationship is. Are we seeing a, a, a relationship that's, wow, wow, it looks really almost like a straight line or is it kind of like, eh, I don't know, I, I guess I kind of see the pattern. So, so there's a difference then there in the, um, in the strength and, I, and I'll show that with some different scatter plots. Okay, so to measure the strength here, we use what's called the linear correlation coefficient. And this is the and this is the variable or value what we call r. Okay, so r, whenever you see r here in, in our lectures, this is going to represent the linear correlation coefficient. Okay. And I'm going to give you the formula for it on the next slide. Okay, but I want you to know that um, the formula is really, really complicated, and we're we're actually just going to use technology. Okay, we're going to use our our graphing calculator here. With, all right, continuing with the previous example to calculate the value of r, this linear correlation coefficient. but we'll use the TI calculator uh, to calculate the value of R. Okay, we'll always, always do that. All right, let's, um, let's, let's take a look at this formula and you'll see why we, we, we wanna use the calculator whenever we can. So the, the, the linear correlation coefficient here, okay, R is given by this formula. It's the sum of each x value minus x bar, which is the mean, divided by s sub x, the standard deviation of x, times each y value minus y bar, which is the average of y, divided by s sub y. Okay, you calculate all that, then you sum up every time you do it for each x value, and then you divide by n minus one, okay? This formula looks terrible. Okay, so it's really, really hard to do by hand. Okay, so so basically what we're going to do is we're, we're going to st step away from, you know, I just want you to know that there's a formula going on behind this, but then I'm going to show you how to use your, your graphing calculator to do it. And, you know, we're in this, in this specific lecture, we're only going to calculate, uh, you know, R for the example that we're working through. But then later on in the follow-up lectures, you'll get a, you'll get a lot of time. You were going to do a lot of examples to practice R. So don't, so don't stress that like in this video, you're only seeing one example of R and the follow-up videos you're going to see, uh, we're going to calculate a lot more. Okay. So before we get and show you how to do the, um, uh, the calculator for it, I want to talk about the properties of the linear correlation coefficient. So this value, this linear correlation coefficient R, it's always between negative one and one inclusive. Okay, so when we see our calculator, you'll never get a value of R that's like negative five or a positive value like 15. No, no, no. R is always, 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 always between negative one and one. That's really, really important. So if R is equal to plus one, then a perfect positive linear relation exists between the variables. So what that means, if R is equal to exactly plus one, you're gonna see a perfect, 
perfect straight positive line in your data, okay? Which isn't something you would see often in the real world. Like if you go back, like even looking at our example here, it's definitely not a po perfect straight line. Like it uh, looks like it's off, just deviates just a little, okay? So if R comes back to being negative one, then a perfect negative linear relationship exists between the two variables. So that would look something like this, literally like a perfect straight line going down, okay? So if R is closer to positive one, all right, like values like 0 0.9, 0 0.99, okay, things like that, the stronger, is the, the stronger is the evidence of a positive association between the two variables. And then the flip side, if R is closer to negative one, the stronger the evidence of a negative association between the two variables. So if you look here, going back at our example here, this definitely, R, it looks like R should, oh, R should be really close to positive one, right? Because it looks almost like a perfect straight line, but it's off just, just a little bit, okay? So R should be close to positive one here. All right, if R is close to zero, okay, then what that means is there's little or no evidence exists of a linear, linear relation okay, between the two variables. So this is important, R close to zero does not imply no relationship. It just says, hey, you know what? There's no linear relationship. And the linear correlation coefficient R is a unitless measure of association. So the, the units of measures of X and Y plays no role in the interpretation of R. So like hours of study and exam scores, those units of measures, meh, you know, don't, don't matter. R just comes back as just straight up as a number. All right, so you're gonna get be close. It's always gonna be between negative one and one. Closer to one means you're positive a relationship. Closer to negative one means you're negative relationship. All right, so let me show you some uh, different R values and scatter plots here. Okay, so here's the perfect positive linear relationship. Okay, this is that R is equal to one right here. You can see like perfect straight line. In here, you can see R is equal to negative one. You can see that it's literally a perfect straight line sloping down, okay? Now look at these two, two scatter plots right here, okay? This one and this one here. You notice here, like you can really, 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 really see that positive trend, okay? Like, shoot, just like this. So this would be an example of an R value is equal to 0 0.9, okay? Where you can for sure see the, see the upward trend. Now look here, okay? Data seems much, much, much more spread out, but there is still, there is still this upward trend to the data. When R is, R is a number greater than 0.8, something like this, 0.9, okay, you, you see this strong, strong positive linear relationship. All right, when R is between like 0.4 to 0.79, something like that, okay? Then you're seeing this moderate, moderate positive linear relationship. Like there's still there's still an upward trend of the data. It's just not as strong as this one here. The same with the negative side, right? Like this is a very, very, very discernible negative pattern down. This would be something like R is roughly equal to negative 0.9. And again here, the data is much more spread out, but there is still this downward pattern, but the data is much more spread out. So R would be equal to negative 0 0.4, okay? And then next here, here are two examples of R is equal to zero. Okay, you can see the first one here, there's just no pattern whatsoever. There's no relationship between the variables. But then here, there's definitely a pattern. Okay, it looks like a quadratic pattern, but there's no linear relationship. So R won't pick up this relationship. It'll say, ah, it's zero, okay? But in reality, there is some relationship, just non-linear, non-linear. Okay, so look, don't do this by hand, okay? What you need to do is, um, we're gonna use our graphing calculator here. And what we need to do is we need to turn on a setting in our calculator called diagnostic on to do this, okay? So I have, I have how you do this in the slides here but what I wanna show you, you know, follow along with me as I do this, okay? So hopefully what you should still have in your calculator is you should still have the data, okay, from the previous, you know, from our, the example that we're working through, 
okay? And so to, to get R, okay? So what we're gonna do here is now for our example, we're gonna find the value of R and comment on its value. Okay, so you gotta make sure you have all these values plugged into your calculator, okay? Then what you're gonna do is there's this button down here called catalog, catalog. You're gonna go second function catalog. And, you, and you're gonna be scrolling down. You're looking for something called diagnostic on, okay? So you literally can, and it's going to take you a while to go through and scroll to get all the way down to the D's, okay? Okay. But you're looking for something called diagnostic on. Diagnostic on. You're going to hit enter once, you're, once your arrow is pointing towards it. And then when it's on this screen, you're just going to hit enter again, okay? And then you're good. So always make sure you have this diagnostic on, okay? Then you're gonna go back and you're gonna use this option in your calculator under stat called linreg ax plus b. Okay, so we're gonna press the stat button. You're gonna scroll over to calc and then you want option number four, this linreg ax plus b. So linreg ax plus b. I'm going to hit enter. Now, if you have a TI-83, you're just going to hit enter again. Just go doot, doot, doot. It's just going to say linreg AX plus B. So just hit enter again. Here, you have to scroll down to calculate. And you should see something like this. Okay. You see this Y is equal to AX plus B and then these values A and B. We're going to, we're going to work with those later on. So just leave, ignore those for now. That's going to come up in the next lecture. R squared we're not going to work with. R squared is what's called the coefficient of determination. Um, basically, just real quickly, it, it, it just explains how much of the variation in the y value can be explained by the variation in the uh, x value. So it's roughly 99, so it's 0.99 if I round it. So it's, what it's saying here is to go from a 50 to a 54, that variation of 4 on your exam score, 99% of it's explained by the one additional hour. R, that's your, that last thing there, there's boom, right there is your linear correlation coefficient. So it's zero, I'm always gonna go out four decimal places for these R values. R is equal to 0 0.9943, okay? And look, it's really close to positive one. And that's exactly what we thought we would get, right? Like going back in our slides. All right, it's a really, really close to a straight line. Like really, really close. Not exactly perfect, but it's really close, all right? So what this means, because, because it's so close to one, What this means is there is strong evidence of a positive linear relationship between the two variables. Between the two variables. All right, and I know we went through this really, really quickly, and, and this video only has this one example, but we're going to be calculating this. Like if you just, as a preview, we're moving towards this, this concept called regression, and we're gonna have a ton more examples of calculating R. So, it, you know, don't worry if you're like, okay, I'm gonna need another example. We are definitely, definitely going to be doing that shortly. And I'll follow this up as we move into our, our next topic here.